uh, welcome everyone and uh, thank you for joining us for today's workshop. Uh, today we are going through an introduction to Epicor ECM, formerly known as Docstar ECM. Uh, just a few items before we start. Uh, all participants have been muted. If there are any questions at any point, please enter them into the chat box. You should be able to find the chat button at the bottom of the screen um, or you may have to hover near the top and uh, select uh, show meeting control. Uh, with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, today, uh, joining us from the TechWeb team are Mitch Robb, Beverly Scanlon, and myself, Matt Peters. Mitch will be taking us through our demo today with an overview of the Epicor ECM interface. Uh, to begin, uh, we'll be going through a short presentation on the background of Epicor ECM, its use cases, and how it can improve processes within your organization. Epicor ECM is an enterprise content management and process automation so so solution that can be deployed either in the cloud or as a software license installed on site. Uh, the solution is completely browser-based, making Epicor ECM a natural extension for the Epicor ERP suite to help digitize and automate paper-based processes across multiple departments, such as sales, production, finance, and human resources. Uh, ECM offers online electronic forms as an option of its suite that automates forms processing for HR onboarding, internal employee and vendor forms, requisition, expense reports, and more, uh, enabling faster processing, reduced cost, and better data and workflow visibility. Uh, the Epicor ECM solution suite contains uh, Ep enterprise content management, which includes scanning, indexing, barcode recognition, region OCR, batch importing, and a variety of other base items, uh, including searching, versioning, and, and security. Uh, it also includes the graphical rule-based workflow to automate processes, uh, forms and forms designer, which will allow you to create uh, expense forms um, or uh, customer credit application forms, uh, and packages, which are document checklists designed to gather and track sets of documents necessary to complete a business workflow. Epicor ECM uh, can help companies automate document-driven processes. Uh, this can reduce costs and increase productivity uh, due to less uh, data entry. The main use cases are AP automation, sales order automation, and HR and employee records. Um, other, oh, sorry about that. Other use cases are credit application approvals, document storage for drawings and spec, spec sheets and many other items. Um, basically, if, if you can imagine it, um, it likely can be done in ECM. Uh, the primary modules are ECM, or Epicor ECM, formerly known as Docstar ECM, workflow and IDC, uh, uh, it's intelligent data capture and forms as well. Epicor ECM is designed for the web. All major browsers and all major tablets and phones are supported. Documents can be uploaded using the web client or can be automatically imported from an email inbox or a shared folder. Using intelligent data capture, you can upload multi-page documents such as invoices or POs um, and automatically retrieve index and store any information found in the document, such as PO num, part num, quantity. With ECM, you can securely store documents with retention policies that can automatically archive or delete the associated documents and automatically file documents in folders via workflow. Retrieval is quick and easy using ECM's rapid searching, which supports keywords, folder names, and full text searches. The content viewer shows documents with annotations such as approval and denial stamps and DocuSign signatures. Uh, versioning can be used to control documents that change over time. Um, you can check in and check out documents. Uh, for example, company policies uh, update uh, uh, often and uh, they can be archived and a new version or updated version can be published as the new version. Uh, ECM workflow. Uh, is a rule-based graphical interface that allows you to build simple or complex workflows for process automation. PackageWorks allows you to define uh, a package of documents, for example, employee documents, with sl slots defined for each document required to complete the package. 
And then the entire package can then be processed by workflow and stored in ECM for easy retrieval. Electronic forms can be used to create forms like an app, uh, application for employment or a credit application with a public link that can be sent outside of the company, or forms can be developed for internal use that can be used to notify other departments, create records in ERP and many other functions. ECM also supports the Microsoft Office uh, suite uh, and also supports Outlook integration for filing documents and importing emails into the Epicor ECM repository. Um, the ECM AP automation module uh, uses intelligent data capture to increase productivity by reducing the required uh, data entry, streamlining invoice approval and matching using automated workflows. Some of the other benefits are reducing or eliminating late, late payments, providing invoice, self, uh, invoice inquiry self-service capabilities for customers, um, enhancing visibility and control of the entire process, as well as prov providing an ECM platform capable of handling growth requirements for the future. Sales order automation um, uses intelligent data capture as well to capture, uh, to automatically capture and extract data from customer purchase orders. The sales order automation then accepts and indexes the purchase order the workflow executes data lookups, confirms customer information and validation, such as credit checks, part number verification, and detects missing, incomplete, or incorrect data. Epicor ECM lets you identify exceptions and automatically route them to a user to resolve the issue. If all of the conditions are met and there are no exceptions, the sales order is created in ERP. For those orders with no exceptions, uh, this is an easy way to accept, review, and, and initiate orders. ECM HR automation. Um, human resources potentially creates dozens of pieces of paper for every employee from applications, background checks, insurance, employment and benefits forms to post separation forms. Using the HR automation, you can quickly process new applicants and route documents through to the appropriate managers with electronic forms, ensuring that the best applicants get the attention they deserve. You can easily onboard new employees with secure built-in workflows to make sure that the right people have the right information at the right time and also identify anything that's missing. Uh, you can securely store and manage employee files with digital folders uh, that ensure separation of key HR documents like I-9s, medical records, and other employee documents and manuals. Uh, in the demonstration, you're going to see um, uh, rapid retrieval of documents. Um, you can see how easy it is to capture documents. Uh, we'll walk you through the process automation um, and uh, show you how it, it, its ability to integrate with ERP. All right, and uh, I'll pass this off to Mitch now. All right. Hello, my name is uh, Mitch Robb, and I'm going to be the one walking you through the Epicor ECM and Epicor IDC uh, applications and kind of going over some of the features and at the end, a demo of AP automation. Uh, so just let me share my screen. Just to, to confirm with you, Matt, my screen is visible now? Yep, I can see it. Perfect. All right, so the first thing that, uh, that I kind of want to go through is um, how Epicor integrates with Epicor uh, ECM. And one of the, the ways that that happens is you can now use Epicor ECM as attachment storage for Epicor. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, att attachment storage at all, uh, basically you're able to attach documents to different types of, of records within Epicor, whether that be customers, parts, uh, sales orders, quotes, you name it. Um, Typically, those are stored in the file system, but with this integration, they can be stored within Epicor ECM, and they can also trigger workflows. And that is done through the attachment type maintenance. Um, so taking a look at Epicor ECM, 
basically when you log into Epicor ECM, this is your home screen. Uh, over here on the right hand side is uh, something called the buzz space, which is basically a message board. This can be used to notify your users of basically whatever you want, whether it's downtime due to a patch or changes in processes. Um, when they log in, they're gonna see those messages. Over here on the left hand side is a tree view of, of uh, Epicor ECM's storage setup. So you'll see it in your folders here. Um, we have a couple different folders. When you're using it for attachment storage, you'll notice that uh, there's actually a company folder, which is this one right here, it's Epico 6, because we're using the Epicor demo database. And underneath it, you'll actually see the types of um, objects within Epicor that you've attached your documents to. So you have AP invoices, AR invoices, credit memos, etc. cetera. Uh, and then down here at the bottom is basically um, their quick search options. So if you click on recent documents, for example, you'll see documents that have recently been brought into Epicor or into Epicor ECM. Uh, if you click on approvals, you'll see documents that are waiting for your approval. Um, workflows are, are documents that are currently within a workflow and alerts are anything that are waiting for user input. Which then brings me to the second tab, which is our retrieve tab. Um, up here at the top, you again have some predefined searches um, and they're actually the same ones that are over here on the left hand side. Uh, you can search by specific content types, which typically are attached to specific types of documents. Uh, you also have the option to pick fields within Epicor ECM, um, because one of the things that comes with uh, documents within Epicor ECM, you actually just give me one second here. Uh, you'll actually see that there are metadata options over on the left hand side. Um, and when you attach documents from within Epicor, you are able to define data that comes over with it. So for example, if you're attaching something to a customer, you can have the customer's name, the customer's address, uh, their ID come over with the document that, that comes into Epicor ECM. Uh, and these search fields allow you to search based on those, those documents. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a search bar up at the top, which is a universal search, and anything typed in here will actually search any of your search fields um, so that you don't necessarily need to define them uh, in, in this retrieve tab. Uh, this also allows you to look at uh, if documents are within a specific workflow. For example, with AP Automation, one of the, the workflows is for non-PO invoices. So if we take a look at the workflow, uh, and we wanna see uh, the workflow name, and we'll pick our non-PO invoice and add it as a search criteria. And if I search, I can now see my documents that are in that workflow. Uh, and then the last piece that I kinda wanna show here is that you are also able to save your searches so that you can use them in the future. So for example, I'm gonna call this one, um, actually I already, I guess have one as active workflows, but we'll call this one workflow search and save it. And that way, if I reset this screen, I can select my workflow search. Oh, actually it didn't reset. So I'll pick this one and then go back to my workflow search and you'll see it's actually changing my searches back to what I initially picked. Uh, the next tab is our capture tab. And this is a method of getting documents into uh, Epicor ECM without necessarily using the Epicor integration because Epicor ECM can be used standalone as well. It doesn't necessarily need to attach to Epicor. Um, you have the option to scan these scan devices are devices that are installed on your local computer. So if you have a uh, printer scanner, for example, attached to your computer, it'll show up as a device here and you can scan directly into ECM. And the import is for importing files. So say you got a, a document in through email, you've saved it to your desktop, you can then browse to that and attach it within uh, Docstar. And that's where you have them showing up in the left-hand side here under different folders. 
Uh, the next tab here is our workflow tab. Uh, this is actually very similar to the retrieve tab, except that it only returns documents that are within workflows. Um, and it'll also show you if you currently have any uh, documents that are waiting for your approval in here as well. So uh, you'll see I have my three non-PO invoice documents that are sitting in that workflow. Um, and I currently don't have any approval requests. Uh, the reports tab, uh, this is mainly typically used for um, productivity type thing, how many documents are coming through ECM, um, things like that. But uh, this is also all based on SSRS, so you can actually create your own reports to show whatever you really want them to show. Um, if I select one of them here, we should get a report that shows up. And hopefully this doesn't take too long. I may need to come back to that one. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to the reports after because this is taking a second to show up. Oh, actually, here we go. Uh, so you can see this one's a, a pre-built report called Documents Created, and it shows basically um, a listing of, of what documents have been created, what content type that they're in, um, over the time period that they were created, uh, etc. And again, this is just an SSRS report, so um, creating new reports for or changing existing reports is something that, that is available to you. Uh, the next tab is forms. Uh, so forms are are actually uh, basically documents that that you can send to users to fill out and then bring into Epicor ECM. Uh, for example, I have a customer credit application here, and if I double click it, it's it's going to open up a new version of this form that I can fill out. I do apologize, this is our, our demo system and it's not necessarily the speediest system out there. Okay, uh, so you notice over here on the left, or sorry, on the right hand side, we have fields that we can fill out. Um, and the, the purpose of this form is to basically fill in a bunch of customer information that can then be used to perform credit checks. Um, so once this is all filled in, you would then click submit, which would uh, save this as a PDF within Epicor ECM and can be used in a workflow. So for example, we could use the information on this form to create a new customer within Epicor and this form will actually attach itself in Epicor to the customer that was created for it. Uh, it's also able to um, be used outside of the organization as well, assuming that your Docstar implementation is available to the web. And how you would typically do that is there's a public link uh, option when you're looking at the forms. It's this little ch uh, chain icon. And if we select that, it's now going to create a, a link that can be sent to someone outside of your organization to open up within a web browser and basically fill out all the information for you. Um, so I'm just gonna generate the link and I'll open it up in a new tab so that you can kind of see what the public link looks like. Uh, so when it comes up here, you'll notice it looks basically the same as it did before. The main difference is um, all the options here for uh, ECM are locked down so that um, users who log in using a public link can't access any other information within the, the ECM system. They can only access the form that you've sent them. Uh, and once they fill in all the information, click submit, it then again saves within Epicor ECM and you could have it notify someone uh, within your organization to say, hey, there's a new form here that needs 
uh, you to be looked at. Uh, this can also be useful for example for timesheets or expenses where uh, they can Basically, your users can come in, they can fill out all their expense information, for example. Um, they can even attach their receipts, like they can attach additional files to this. So they can attach the receipts uh, and things like that and then submit it, which will then, again, trigger a workflow, whatever we want it to do, um, uh, including creating a payment within Epicor to pay those expenses, for example. Uh, so coming back here, uh, the next tab is our packages tab. Uh, again, the packages are typically used for packaging multiple documents together. Um, and it allows us to run workflows based on all of the documents, whereas normally you can only run workflows on single documents. Uh, this is one of the things that are useful, for example, for HR, where you may have uh, a bunch of documentation and forms that new employees need to fill out, and you can basically just assign that package to them. They can fill out all of all of that information, and using a workflow, it keep just keeps all of that uh, information together. And last up here is the uh, admin tab. This is where you'll set up things like users groups, document security. Um, some of the other kind of neat features in here are data links. So data links can actually be used to pull data from other data sources if needed. So for example, you can pull information directly out of SQL or if uh, there isn't any pre-built in um, uh, data links that you can use for Epicor, you can actually connect to Epicor's REST services. Uh, to pull in additional information that may not necessarily be there from uh, from like the default AP automation or sales order automation. Uh, and then we have the workflow designer. And um, this, just for example, I'm just kind of going to go through the, uh, the non-PO. Actually, I'll do this instead just to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so basically, this is kind of what uh, a workflow looks like. It's a step-by-step -step representation of, of what needs to happen to a document when it comes in. So in this case, our AP invoice comes in. It looks to see if the, there's already been an invoice um, brought in with the same invoice number and vendor number. Um, it then auto-indexes the in auto indexes the invoice. So for example, picking which company it's supposed to go to, validates that the vendor exists within Epicor, um, checks to see if there's any other invoices that could be the same as it. Um, if not, then it checks to see if there's lines on the invoice. And if there are, it creates the lines in a pre-create um, step, which basically just validates that all of the information's there from, you know, the part number exists, the terms are there, et cetera. Um, and then if all of that is all good, it goes to an approval step, which basically notifies somebody that this invoice needs to be approved. And once they approve it, it then creates the, the document within Epicor and attaches the actual physical document to it and then waits for details. So that's kind of a, the basic rundown of what the non-PO invoice looks like. Um, and then uh, really, I think that's most of what we are going to go through for the Epicor ECM, uh, at least until we come back for the AP automation uh, demo after uh, we go through the Epicor IDC application. Um, so moving over to Epicor IDC or Docstar IDC. Uh, IDC stands for Intelligent Data Capture. Uh, the purpose of this particular application is to physically read the data from documents that are brought into it. So uh, for example, in the case of AP automation, your AP invoice is actually going to come into IDC first, and this is going to try and pull all the information that we need from the, the physical document so that we can create that invoice within uh, Epicor. Uh, so the first page when you first log into IDC, again, is mainly a, a productivity type of view where it shows the types of documents that have been uh, processed, how many have been processed by day, uh, and if there's any waiting in certain steps. Uh, so 
going through what IDC can do, um, we have classes. Uh, basically, this is classification of, of the documents that come in. So IDC isn't necessarily just used for AP automation, can be used for sales order automation, or really reading any documents that you may want to read data from. And classification is a way of, determin of IDC determining what type of document it's looking at. So IDC can be trained to, to know that when an invoice comes in, that it's an invoice, and when a PO comes in, it's a PO. Um, the class verification also allows you to split the documents into, um, like for example, if you have a PO uh, and an invoice put in the same file, um, classification can tell based on what the documents look like that this is actually two different documents and it will dynamically split them out into the two documents it's supposed to be. Um, the other thing that it can be used for as well is if you have any supporting documentation um, that come in from your documents, for example, on an AP invoice, if you have uh, a terms of service attached to it, uh, classification can uh, be trained to know that the terms of service page is an attachment and that it shouldn't read it. Because um, the one thing with IDC is that it is based on um, number of pages, it's licensed based on number of pages. So if you uh, classify something as an attachment that doesn't count towards your your pages read. Um, basically for, for this to happen uh, we do need to train IDC and the way that we do that is typically we take one month worth of the documents that we want to classify and we throw them through the, the classification engine so that it can basically look at the, those types of documents and figure out based on how they look, what type of document it is. Um, the next step is data verification. So once the document's been classified, uh, it is then read through OCR, the data is pulled off, and uh, the then it we need to verify that the data that are pulled off is correct. Um, so this is based on document mappings that are set up within IDC. So for example, again, with um, uh, an AP invoice, where we'd wanna pull things like the vendor off of the invoice, uh, as well as you know, if we're looking at lines, we wanna look at part number, um, pricing, quantity, etc. cetera. Um, that all happens in the data verification step. And you'll get a little bit of a better idea when, uh, we go through the AP automation of kind of what that looks like and what that does. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here on it right now. Um, the reports tab is very similar to the reports tab in Epicor UCM, mainly productivity. This is um, uh, an area where you can see by user, you know, how many uh, documents have been brought in, for example, um, by that user, what type of documents, where they're currently waiting, whether they're image processing, OCR, if they need classification, uh, et cetera. And if we click on batches, this will actually give us, I don't have any in here right now, um, but it would basically give you a listing of the documents that are currently in the system, whether they're completed or again, the step that they're on. Uh, admin panel, again, this is where you can set up users and groups for access to Epicor IDC. Uh, this is also where you would set up your document types. So you would start with a document form definition. I'm just gonna show off one here that we have created for AP invoice. And this basically just defines the type of data that we wanna pull off of the AP invoice. So we have actually two tables here because this is set up so that it can read line level data. So the first table is our header data, things like vendor, um, the subtotal, your dates, etc. And then the second table is the line data, um, things like your part number, the part description, the quantity, unit price, and the total for the specific line that you're trying to pull off. Um, once you have your document type, uh, sorry, your document form definition set up, you can then set up a document type, uh, which I have one here set up for AP invoice. And if we take a look at it, I've said that my my form definition is the AP invoice map that that we had created. And then the last piece piece is your batch type. So there's multiple ways of getting information into uh, Epicor IDC. Uh, one way is you can create a batch within the uh, the actual application itself, which is done by this create batch button, which I'll show 
shortly. Um, but we can also use a scanner from uh, a client that can be installed. And we can also set up an email um, scraper as well. And basically what that does is we connect it to an email address and we tell it to look at a specific folder. And as emails come into that specific folder, it will automatically pull the attachments off of it and start processing it through uh, IDC. So one of the things that you can do in your batch type is you can have multiple document types um, selected. So say your one email address, your folder uh, is going to have AP invoices and POs come in for your sales order automation. So you could have your AP invoice set up, your, um, your PO document set up here as well. And using classification, it will split those out and bring them in as the correct type based on the mappings that you set up. Um, and then, yeah, the last piece here is the create batch. Um, this is if you're not using email and you just want to drag and drop files in here. Um, you could pick your batch type here, which comes with your default document type, and then it, it will process through the system. So to kind of put this all together, I'm going to go through a quick demo of AP automation. Um, now, our IDC unfortunately isn't licensed, so uh, I have to use screenshots to show off, off a lot of this piece. So I'm just going to pull this thing up here. Um, so let's just pretend that I drag and dropped uh, uh, an invoice into the create batch tab. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to go to class verification. So in this case, I have a uh, an invoice header document. So basically, I don't want to look at the, the line on this one. I just want to get the header information off of it. Um, you'll see here it has a percentage beside the document type that it's picked. Basically, that means it's 100% sure that the document type is an AP invoice header document. Um, because we're reading information off of physical documents, um, the classification and even data verification isn't necessarily going to be 100%. Um, there's always going to be that odd invoice that comes in that just doesn't necessarily read properly. And um, this is basically designed to say, you know, if it's not confident in it, it's the, this percentage is going to change. Um, one of the things you, you also can do with the IDC is have it automatically skip these steps if it's 100% confident. So basically, instead of it coming in here to class verification, it will be in this case, because it was 100%, it would just skip this step and go straight to data verification. And if it wasn't sure, then it would still show up in this class verification if it's not 100% sure. So once it's figured out what the type of document it is that it's looking at, it then tries to verify the data that's on that document. Uh, you'll notice on the right hand side here, there's now boxes around all the text that showed up on the invoice. That means that the OCR engine determined that there's data there, but it didn't necessarily use it because we didn't necessarily map all of those fields to something. Um, in this case, it wasn't able to, to determine what the vendor was or where the subtotal was on, on this invoice. So typically what you would do is you would select vendor, for example, on uh, the left hand side here, and then I would click on the box around the vendor name. Um, the other option is if, uh, for example, you don't have a vendor name here and it's, it's, um, it's an image instead, what you can do is just type the vendor in here. And because of, of the way that, that that works, it's going to look at this document type and know that, um, like for example, with the, if there was a logo here, it's gonna know that if it sees that logo, the vendor should be the one that you typed in. Um, so I'm just gonna to go to the next piece here, which is where I've now clicked on the data that I wanted on the right hand side and have it had everything filled in. Um, so now everything is green here. I have a, um, a green check mark instead of the uh, red check mark that I, or sorry, the red dash that I had before. Um, you'll also notice here as well that the amount due had an, an amount in it, uh, but was still red and that didn't end up changing. Um, one of the things you can define in your map is basically validation. So the amount due in this case has to equal the subtotal plus taxes and shipping. If it doesn't equal that, then the validation fails. And that's why we had that red box around uh, our amount due. So 
now that the, uh, um, the data verification is complete, we would then submit the document, which will pass it over to Epicor ECM to go through a workflow, which in turn will create the object that we want in Epicor. So I'm gonna go back over here. And I, again, pre brought this one in and it's actually this Eastside Transportation Services invoice. So you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, we now have all the metadata that we pulled off of Epicor IDC, but there's also more here. Um, that's part of the workflow that I showed you earlier. Um, once it figures out who the customer is, or sorry, who the, the vendor is, for example, it automatically fills in your vendor number and your vendor ID. Uh, it also fills in their currency code uh, and as well their terms. So that's why we have some additional information here, over here on the left hand side that wasn't pulled off of IDC. Um, and now this, this invoice is currently waiting for approval. So in this case, what would have happened is uh, whoever approves invoices would get an email with a link to uh, Epicor ECM. And if they click on that link, it would bring them to this page and they can just select the approve button. And I'm just gonna select approve. And you'll notice that uh, we actually had a change in our workflow step here. It is now uh, in the payment details, it's asleep and it's waiting for checks. So basically it's now waiting for, um, for you to pay this invoice. Uh, if we look over here on the left hand side, we have a history tab. So one of the things that you can see here is who approved an invoice, for example, um, and, uh, and who requested the, the approval. So that would typically be the user that was initially assigned to the invoice, not necessarily the person who uh, approved it. Uh, if we select all here, we can actually see all of the workflow steps that this invoice went through. Uh, and then um, some of the other kind of options over here on the left-hand side are related documents. So um, what that typically uh, does is we would select fields in the metadata that are related. Um, so for example, if we have a customer uh, in here and we wanna see all of their, their um, uh, AR invoices, say that we have them in here or vendors and we want to see all the invoices that are attached to that vendor, uh, we could set the, the vendor num as a rela related document and then that way we'd actually see basically all of the invoices for the vendor show up here as selectable items. Uh, the other piece here is uh, versioning. So uh, Epicor ECM uh, does have version control. You can make changes to many of, of the documents over here on the right hand side, things like adding notes and things like that. And when you do that, it will actually create a separate version of the document while keeping the old version of the document around as well. Um, so now that this workflow is complete, we can actually go over it into Epicor and we'll see here that there's an AP invoice group called Docstar. And that group has our invoice inside of it. So we have our, uh, our $70 invoice. Uh, it created a test part uh, line here for the full amount. And it's basically ready to be, to be posted now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an example of how workflows can be used to bring documents or to create, um, to create records within Epicor. Um, yeah, I think really that's the whole demo. So um, I guess we might as well open up the floor to questions now. How long has this uh, uh, module been uh, available in Epicor? Uh, so uh, ECM, um, I'm trying to think of when they first, when they first purchased and started implementing um, Docstar, I believe it was with the release of uh, Epicor 10.1.500 or it's either .1.500 or 1.600. So I believe it's probably been five or six years now. 
maybe a little longer. And, and the basic um, thought behind the ECM or the Docstar is to take more of your um, business process uh, from paper to digital. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of different um, ways that it can be used. So, so that's one, uh, reading physical documents and, and uh, processing them in, in Epicor. Um, but it can also be used, uh, again, as, as document storage. And even then, that document storage, uh, for example, if you, um, if you wanted to print off a packing slip and you wanted to keep a copy of it, um, we can actually use uh, uh, APR. Um, or uh, advanced print routing within Epicor to automatically attach um, your printed document reports to doc in Docstar as well to the object that it's been printed from. That that sounds like taking paper taking paper <laughs> out of your system and taking it more digital. Yes. Yeah. And and the other thing too with APR is is um, you can actually use APR to email those documents as well when they're printed. So if, for example, you had invoices um, that, that you want to email to your customer instead of printing them off and sending them through the mail, um, you could use APR to automatically send those. Docstar can also be used to send those as well. Um, and not only that, but I mean, you can use Docstar for... Um, for approving documents before they go out as well. So uh, say you want your invoices to go out, but if they're large enough, you don't necessarily want them to to go out without somebody knowing that they've gone out. Um, that's one of the things that you could do in your workflow within Epicor ECM. Um, would you have any idea from your current existing Epicor people, what percent have Doc, Docstar or ECM? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I know like we recently actually um, had quite a few customers that have uh, started implementing the Epicor ECM. Um, from our current customer base, my gut feeling is probably around 30, 40% use it. So how, how does a principal who likes to have everything, you know, signed off and, and, uh, you know, checks and balances. Yep. Uh, and so that's why uh, he likes to have things printed out in, in front and all that. Right. Uh, how, how, does, uh, how, how does that go through? Is that possible with uh, DocuStar? For sure, yeah. So th that is where we would use uh, workflows. So for example, the AP invoice that I had brought in um, stopped at a certain point for approval we can set up approval steps on any document that comes in and it doesn't necessarily even have to go to Epicor. Um, like if you had a document that doesn't even need to go to Epicor, but you want it to go through some kind of an approval process, you can drop that document into uh, Epicor ECM and part of its workflow will be sending an email to, off to, uh, to someone for an approval. And, and so will that approval, uh, uh, be noted somewhere in that batch or in that document? Yep. So if you pull open the document here, and actually just using my AP automation here as an example, uh, if I select the approvals under history, you can actually see here that I was the one that approved this at 140. So, and it, it, can, uh, it can also handle multiple approvals. So uh, like if there's like three people that, that need to um, put their stamp on a document, you can do that and they will all show up under this approvals tab. There are also approval stamps that can be applied to documents. So it can be like a, a more visual um, uh, approach to the approvals. Um, you, you'd be able to see uh, the document with and without annotations, but with annotations, you'd see the approval stamps. How long does that uh, take to bring to integrate into a Epicor format? Uh, so um, installing it and getting it set up with Epicor um, doesn't take too long, but uh, really it depends on what you want to do with each of the documents and how many documents um, 
you want a workflow on because really the workflow is kind of a case by case basis. It depends on what you need it to do. Uh, something like AP automation is going to take a little bit longer because we actually have to write data into Epicor. Um, but something like just adding approval steps is relatively, relatively short amount of time. Well, one of the biggest uh, things I'm looking at uh, from the finance accounting side is to shrink the paper. Yeah. Especially, especially the storage and the processing. And, uh, and so that would be a, a objective. And so how long does it take to get that kind of process, you know, to, you know, just in globally, you know, how much is reasonable to try and shrink it and, and uh, keep everybody comfortable. Right. Yeah. And I mean, um, we could probably talk about this this separately. Um, but you know, again, part of it does depend on how many documents are there. But um, if you're not really looking at it processing into Epicor, and you're just looking for for ways of storing the documents and making sure that um, only specific people have access to those documents and specific people have the ability to approve documents. Um, I, I don't necessarily see that as being a long project. Like I would say probably like a couple of weeks, we could get that up and running, ready to go. Everything's good. What, what if let's, let's say um, you throw this over to the HR side and, you know, say you got the I-9s and other documents that are coming, I imagine they're coming from outside, you know, uh, of the Epicor system. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, you're having some regulatory um, document signed, COVID document signed, you know, on the HR side or, or on the credit side. Um, can those be scanned in and integrated into the storage side, you know, secure, a secured side on uh, Docstar? Yeah, for sure. Those can definitely be, be brought in. Um, if you're not looking at pulling any specific data off of those documents and you're just looking to store them, um, they can just be brought directly into, uh, into Epicor ECM. Uh, basically just, just, stored under a specific folder, um, for example. Uh, but if you want to bring data off of them, that's where the IDC comes in. So the IDC being being the intelligent data capture, um, once we map out what we want off of it, it will learn where that information is stored on the document and pull that off as metadata so we can do things like um, I don't know, if you want to email a specific department, if uh, if if based on specific data that came off of that document, we can do that. Um, so, you know, again, that does partially depend on what you want to do with those documents, whether you're just storing them or if we need to do some kind of processing off them. But either way is, yeah, we can definitely bring those into Epicor ECM and do something with them. So it can, it, like we have, um, we use e-file for some of our secure uh, uh, storage such as uh, credit and uh, human resource, you know, mm -hmm. uh, government compliance, uh, we scan that in. Uh, so would we be able to migrate from that over to uh, a doc store, uh, doc star? Uh, so you'd you'd be able to use Docstar for the same thing, storing them. Um, as far as getting the information out of e-file to bring into Epicor ECM, that I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know those are typically locked down pretty good. And sometimes if you want that type of data out of it, there is a, a fee associated with that. A fee on your side or e-file side? On their side, uh, okay. on e-file side. Okay, but so if we paid that fee, uh, would that uh, flow over seamlessly uh, uh, into your uh, system? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> again, that kind of depends on the information that comes out of e-file. Um, we'd be able to bring those documents in, but if we're looking to associate them with like a specific customer or an employee within Epicor, then we would need metadata that, to come along with, with those documents so we know where to put them. 
Yeah, I mean, they'd have to have a certain protocol on it, I'm sure. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that we could probably figure something out for that. Okay. I have a question on forms. Sure. Um, can a form be populated with data pulled from an Excel workbook stored locally? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I... Hmm. I want to say uh, no, not not the form specifically. Um, it is possible to bring Excel sheets into Docstar, sorry, into Epicor ECM, um, but I'm not sure how easy it would be to pull the data off of it as as metadata. Um, I know I know for sure that you can bring and store Excel sheets within ECM though. Okay. That's a good question. I think I'll have to do a little bit more looking at that. I that's actually not something that I've I've even looked into before. Okay. So, and then my follow-up question to that would be: um, without purchasing IDC separately, would mm -hmm. these forms be uh, searchable and retrievable based on any field? Yes, the forms would be. Uh, IDC really is only required if you want to dynamically pull data off of physical documents. Right, yeah. See, I, I don't think we would need that, but being able to, to retrieve based on any field in a form would, would be advantageous. Yeah, like especially one, one where you're filling out, all of these fields that we fill out are actually um, a content field within uh, Epicor ECM that gets populated with data. So going back to the search fields here, we can actually pick the specific field if we wanted to, to search on. So like say I wanted to search for cust ID, mm -hmm. I can search by cust ID. Um, so yeah, any, anything that comes off of those forms we can search for. Perfect. Um, and then on workflows, um, right now, several of the processes I'm involved in are, are um, very reliant on SharePoint and and the workflows and the email notifications and approvals and, and right. everyone has their own dashboards. Um, if we were to switch over to, to ECM, would, would we still have that functionality? So we'd have that functionality, but we'd probably have to rebuild it within ECM. Hmm. So how would you say it compares to SharePoint? Uh, I mean, it's actually, uh, from what I've used of SharePoint, which isn't a whole lot, um, it's very similar in terms of, of functionality. Um, the biggest advantage really that ECM has is how closely it integrates with Epicor though. Um, for example, you know, when you're attaching documents within Epicor, they automatically are in ECM and they come with the metadata, any metadata that you want from the record that you're attaching it to. Um, and similarly going the other way, if we want documents to create things within Epicor, we have pre-built uh, functions to do that. Okay, and then just to verify, IDC is a separate module and a separate purchase, correct? Yes, it is okay. separate. Okay. ECM does contain some uh, base, uh, kind of basic region OCRs. So uh, if the information or if the forms are always the same, um, you can pull data from areas off of the form but uh, but if you need something, say, in the footer and it's a multi-page document, IDC would be the option there. Okay. That was all I had. Thank you. Not a problem. Any more questions? Okay, uh, well, like Matt said, if you do come up with questions later on um, after after you've let this stew for a little while, um, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll do our best to answer any any questions that may come up after as well.